Are you looking for a place to dive deep into all the mysterious, dark, and just plain odd stuff The Sims has to offer? Then the Olive Spectre Oddities Museum is the place for you. This lot is the premier spot for viewing all things weird from across The Sims world. There are collections for all the occults, wacky machines galore, a greenhouse filled with strange plants, and so much more to explore, so let's get into it. I am building this on the 50 by 40 Laurel Library lot in Brychester. I wanted this place to be set in a historic downtown area, this was basically the only lot that had that aesthetic and was large enough to fit in all the weird junk we're going to cram into this place. It took me a lot of fiddling to get the scaling and shape of this build the way I wanted, so I cut out a bunch of those tedious bits. You're not missing much though. This build is basically just a giant donut shape with a courtyard in the center and a greenhouse at the back. I had to leave out a bunch of stuff from the speed build because I had almost 13 hours of footage to edit and that was just the parts I decided to record. I did my best to get the main stuff in though so you can get a decent idea of each of the main exhibits. So we'll get to watch the exhibits on vampires, aliens, spellcasters, werewolves, and death come together. I skipped recording the smaller transitional areas as well as the cafe and tragic clown room. I know, tragic for them, but I'll give you a look at all that stuff in the tour at the end, so stick around for that. The fancy bit at the back is the greenhouse. The roofing was tricky with all the diagonal walls, but I was able to figure it out eventually. I used the diagonal half-abled roofs on the angled bits, then tucked in some of the half-hip roof pieces in between. Originally, I wanted to use glass roof texture, but those just looked weird with all the intersecting walls, so I swapped it for a copper looking one instead. It took me forever to sort out the windows, so I skipped ahead and am now showing off how I put in the roofing detail at the top. I just lined up those little pieces from get together along the base of the half walls, then raised the platform in this area up until the roof details were at the height I wanted. Then I just copied that room and pasted it onto the back area to match. The roofing on this greenhouse was a bitch to sort out, and the roof details were so finicky to work with, but I was determined to make this shape work. All of my suffering did pay off in the end though because I think this greenhouse is gorgeous. For the wallpaper, I used the worn wood paneling from Horse Ranch. It has the same minty green as the Strangerville windows and also has some orangey wood peeking out on the chipped bits, which ties into the copper roof. Figuring out the window and siding combination for the rest of the exterior took way too long as well, so I jumped us forward to what I finally decided to go with. I used a combination of university and base game windows here, the shutters are from Snowy Escape, and the dormers are from Horse Ranch. The dark wood sliding is also from Horse Ranch, and then the stonewall texture is actually from Bowling Night stuff, oddly enough. I thought about using a different stone wall here to reduce the number of packs, but I liked this one the best and this lot was already going to use items from so many packs that I said, fuck it. This is not the time to build conservatively, so I just went all in and used whatever I wanted. So it's probably going to be a bit difficult for most people to download, but I think this place turned out amazing and it was just a fun thing I wanted to try building. I love the combo of the green and the orange on the greenhouse. So I put up those weathered copper awnings from Seasons over some of the windows to bring touches of that color scheme into the rest of the build too. I threw up a few gargoyles outside as well because this creepy old building was just screaming for them. Moving inside, the first exhibit we'll work on is for vampires. My plan for these occult exhibits was to just throw down a bunch of stuff from their packs and then try to rearrange everything in a way that looks good and fill in the rest with other items to round everything out. Like I said, I made exhibits for all the occults. Vampires, werewolves, and spellcasters were pretty easy. They each had their own dedicated stuff packs with strong aesthetics, so those came together without much issue. For ghosts, I kind of lumped them in with the death and paranormal stuff area. Plant sims have a forbidden fruit tree and magic bean seeds in the greenhouse, pretty easy. Aliens have tons of stuff from multiple packs, so no issues there. Mermaids were the challenging ones. They got cheated. There really isn't any special items for their occult. They don't even get a cool urn or tombstone. Since there was no way I was going to fill an entire exhibit hall for them, I ended up making a mermaid fountain thing in the courtyard and put their single conch shell on display. It's not much compared to the others, but it's the best I could do with what we have. Back 
to vampires though. They have a bunch of cool stuff that really works for a museum, so their exhibit was probably the easiest for me to put together. I really like displaying the different types of coffins. Initially I tried putting them up on platforms, but the platforms were causing glitches with the pillars, so I ended up layering the stone side tables from Desert Lux and putting the coffins on top of those instead. That area definitely looks the most like a traditional museum. The other stuff I put on display in this area includes some gargoyles, all the vampire tomes, the vampire squid and batfish, vampire urn, and plenty of other old furniture and art from their pack. To finish things off and make these look more like exhibits and not like an oddly decorated house, I tried fencing them off. However, adding any fences inside at all glitched the columns as well, no matter what I did. So I had to get rid of them, unfortunately. Instead, I used some debug chain fencing pieces to section off areas. It's not as good as the actual fences, but it'll have to do. In the back right corner on the first floor is the alien and robots wing. I was able to pull from quite a few different packs for this area, so there were more than enough items to choose from. We've got stuff in here from Get to Work, Strangerville, Journey to Batu, and University. Aliens are my favorite occult, so I had a blast filling out this area. Unfortunately, aliens are a pretty lame occult in The Sims 4. I'd say that vampires or werewolves are probably the best, objectively, but I just love aliens, so they're still my favorite. I know in my heart that the Sims team is probably never gonna do this, but I want them to do an entire occult pack expanding on aliens. They need a skill tree like vampires, werewolves, and spellcasters so they can have tons of new skills and abilities to use. I don't even know what I want them to be able to do. I just want them to do more stuff. I also want more lots on 6M or a whole new space area to visit, whether that's another planet or a space station so we can live and interact with more aliens. It doesn't have to be huge, just some place where we can build wild, futuristic and alien lots and have them not look totally out of place. The Sims 3 got into the future at the end of its lifespan, so I guess an alien occult pack isn't totally out of the realm of possibilities, but I'm not holding my breath. I'm sure there must be mods out there that add gameplay for aliens, so if you know of any, please let me know because I really want to play with them now, but I know they're going to fall flat in the game as is. Gameplay falling short is probably one of the reasons I mostly stick to building, so maybe I need to build something alien related instead. If you have any ideas for that, let me know. Moving upstairs, we have the Spellcasters Hall. They're another occult that fell a little flat for me. Although they have a skill tree, unlike aliens and mermaids, I feel like most of their spells and potions and stuff aren't anything special. They just seem like in-game need and emotion cheap. Their gameplay doesn't really add anything new or interesting that immerses you in their occult. You're just holding a wand to clean something up or mess with needs instead of using any of the other avenues we have to do the same things in the game already. Again, I am not super clear on what exactly I want to be different with them, I just know spellcasters aren't what I was hoping for. They just have no mystery or mayhem or uniqueness to them. I know, not helpful, but that's all I have. If you feel the same and can actually articulate some concrete ideas, please help me out and share them with us in the comments. That's enough complaining. Even though I'm not wowed by the Realm of Magic gameplay, the furniture and decor from that pack is gorgeous and I always enjoy decorating with it. All the art deco pieces and crystals and potions has this place looking so magical by the end. I sorted out the wallpaper off camera so you won't get the full effect until the tour at the end, but it is great. The next space over is dedicated to werewolves. 
Now, there weren't as many large museum quality pieces in the werewolves pack as the others, so it was a little more challenging to fill up this space, but I think I was able to make it work. This is one of the newest packs I've gotten for my game, so all of these items are still quite new to me, and it was fun decorating with them. The little werewolf nursery items are some of the cutest things we have in the game, and I just want to use them all the time. I mean, how could you not want to put that little bassinet with the sheep mobile in every room you ever build? Besides the cute little nursery alcove, I also included the full set of collectibles you can find in the pack. I really like all those little pieces and the fact that they all have lore and gameplay attached to them makes them even better. I really hope they create more detailed collections like this in the future. This game really shines when they lean into the lore where you are all hungry for and I am always wanting to see more of it. I did a little nod to Sims lore with naming the museum after Olive Spectre. Olive and Ophelia's household in The Sims 2 was one of my favorites, along with like everyone from Strange Town. Yeah, I've liked mysterious, creepy lore and aliens since I was a child. Olive has quite the odd, dark history, so I figured out of all the Sims, she'd absolutely be the one to have an entire oddities museum in her name. The final main exhibit space is the death room or ghost room. I'm not entirely sure what to call this area. It's got a bunch of items related to death and the paranormal stuff pack. So there's a bunch of Grim Reaper, Voodoo, and Sand stuff in here. I gave this museum the spooky lot challenge, so there should be some ghosts who'll wander around here at night. It's also a vampire nexus, so you'll have them hanging around here creeping up the place too. I had a hard time figuring out what color scheme to go with here. I was flip-flopping between black and that teal you see on some of the paranormal pieces. When I chose a wallpaper off camera though, I ended up going with the blacks. It matched better and definitely fit more with a Grim Reaper death theme for this area. I've actually been wanting to do a witchy home set in some southern swamp where an old spinster aunt lives with her niece. And now this room has really gotten me in the mood to work on that. First I said I wanted to do a futuristic alien build and now I'm saying I want to do a low country witch house and I am not even through with this current build yet. I need to slow down and focus on one at a time. I swear I have so many ideas but never enough time to build them all. The last area I'm going to show in the speed build portion is the greenhouse. I love plants and botanical gardens so this was a cool space to create. In here, I try to include one of all the weird plants we have in the game. The back wall has all the alien plants, both from 6M and Strangerville. These plants are so wacky and I love them, but they're not easy to incorporate into most landscaping. So if you're like me and really like them, but can't bring yourself to put them in your average Sims yard, at least you can come here to appreciate them. There are also strange fruit, grow fruit, plasma, emotional, and money trees in here as well as a cow plant, plant sim stump, and meat wall. The grow fruit tree is in the magical plants area along with valerian, wolfsbane, mandrake, and death flower. The plasma fruit tree has a bunch of deadly plants around it. So there's toxic chamomile, toxic morel, poison fire leaf, and noxious elderberry. Then the cow plant has the meat wall next to it along with some of those paranormal stuff vines and a six and mosquito trap as a little buddy. To finish things off, I filled in empty spaces with debug shrubbery, drew fences around all the plants, and put it in a couple benches. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the finished build so you can get the full scope of things and check out the areas I had to cut out. Here we are at the finished Olive Spectre Oddities Museum. I really like how this whole place turned out. The landscaping is pretty basic for me, but it's still nice. I found this crashed UFO prop from Get Famous and just had to incorporate it somewhere. So I ended up turning it into the sign for this place. Let's take a look inside because I did the wallpapers in a few of the areas off camera. So let's check all that out. Here is the finished vampires exhibit hall. I think it looks perfect with all the red and antiques in here. 
We saw most of this already, so let's move on to an area you haven't seen yet though. Here is the cafe. I love the mismatched chairs, old wallpaper, and vines everywhere. Upstairs, there's a bunch of old books and a spot for live music. This place must smell absolutely amazing with all of the books, coffee, and plants everywhere. I would totally hang out all day in here if I could. Next to the cafe is the greenhouse. This is another spot I adore. If I'm not in the cafe, I'd absolutely be hanging out here checking out all the weird plants. This little corner with the cow plant and the meat wall has so much quirky Sims energy, I love it. Coming out of the other side of the greenhouse, we're at the alien and robot exhibits. Aliens are my favorite, so this is also one of my favorite spots. This whole back part of the first floor is really all my vibes matched together. Vintage, cozy, plants, but also weird alien shit. The last area on the first floor you haven't seen yet is the gift shop. It's got a little bit of everything from each of the different exhibits for your sims to take home with them. You've made it this far in the video, so I know you'd be going broke buying out everything in this place. But hey, I'd be right there with you. Alright, now let's move upstairs. Each of the stairwells has a mini exhibit in them. I'm not going to go into all those, but you can check them out if you download this lot. Moving this way, we have the library. I tried stocking the bookshelves with different occult books, but it didn't work unfortunately. So they just have the regular books in them. If you know how to do this on community lots for any bookcase type, let me know. Next to the library is the Spellcaster Exhibit Hall. Adding in this purple wallpaper really helps tie everything together and makes it look so magical. A fun little area that I added off camera that I do want to show off is the cupcake machine. It didn't fit in the cafe, but this wacky Sims collection would not be complete without this monstrosity, so I was glad I could fit it in here. It is functional as well. The next room over is all about werewolves. I like how relaxed and unstuffy this exhibit feels compared to some of the others. It really suits the vibes of the werewolves pack, I think. The last main exhibit space up here is the death room. It is full of stuff on grim, ghosts, and spirits. I also included the celestial crown thing. Magic crystals seem like a good fit for this supernatural seance area. The final room up here is another you haven't seen yet. This is the Tragic Clown Artist Studio. I wanted to add in a functional area so your sims can actually do stuff here other than walk around. There's not a ton of Tragic Clown items in the game, but I put in whatever clown stuff I could find. I really wish we had gotten that knitted Tragic Clown plushie they made concept art for during the Nifty Knitting Boats. But alas, they taunted us with him just to rip him away. I will forever be sad about that. I mean, come on, who wouldn't want a plushie of this man for all of their sims? Out in the courtyard, there is a big patio attached to the cafe for enjoying a cup of coffee outside on a nice day. I did my best to incorporate what few things I could for mermaids out here too. So I made this fountain in a sort of mermaid cove theme. Then over in the sculpture garden area, there is a conch shell on display and a couple of Sulani sculptures as well. The mermaid ties are pretty ambiguous, but this will have to do. That's all the main stuff. There's definitely still plenty of little exhibits and items that I didn't really show off, so you can discover those for yourself if you end up downloading this museum. I had a blast digging through all the different items in the game to unearth all the weird stuff I could find and put on display. All this wacky stuff is what really makes the game in my eyes, but oftentimes we're not using all this stuff in our regular gameplay, so having a lot that compiles all this quirky sim stuff into one place your sims can visit to appreciate it all is something we all need in our games in my opinion. Let me know what you think of this odd museum and what area is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, send a thumbs up my way. If you like the weird vibes we've got going on here, you should probably subscribe. I try to do lots of interesting builds on this channel, so I think you're gonna like it here. Remember, be kind to yourself today, and I'll see you next time.